Welcome to the story of indigenous banking. The story of how homegrown banking changed the face of a nation and put the power of money in the hands of everyday people who worked hard to earn that money. This is 1914. The first steamboat passes through the Panama Canal. World War I breaks out in Europe. The population of Trinidad and Tobago is just 350,000. The first Calypso recording is made. Port of Spain officially becomes a city. Eric Eustace Williams is just three years old. Sugar and cheap labor are the mainstay of the national economy. And while it's almost a century since the emancipation of slavery, equal opportunity and access to services are still a long way off for the working class. But this was all about to change. For anyone who could afford a penny, change was now in the air. With a penny, anyone could now be afforded access to what was, up until then, a truly upper-class privilege. The privilege of having a bank account. In 1914, rising out of activism that demanded reforms and equality for the working class, the Trinidad Cooperative Bank opened the doors. The TCB was the first indigenous bank anywhere in the Caribbean. Before this pivotal moment in banking history and social evolution, banks in the Caribbean were based somewhere in either Canada, the USA, or the UK. TCB was made by the people of Trinidad and Tobago for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. The Trinidad Cooperative Bank, affectionately called the Penny Bank, became an aggressive pioneer of affordable housing in Trinidad, and in 1929, it acquired an area in Belmont and built and rented out 30 low-cost houses, which were eventually sold to their tenants on a rent-by basis. Using rent payments as mortgage installments quickly became a trend on the local real estate landscape. Fast forward across another world war, with Trinidad and Tobago becoming a key location in the war effort. Go past Jean and Dinah, and a society under a strong cultural influence of the U.S., and an economy booming on oil, construction, and manufacturing. Independence in 1962, and right into the civil rights movement or black power movement, and a population approaching 900,000. Welcome to the 1970s. At this point, the competition for home ownership was at an all-time high. Enter the National Commercial Bank of Trinidad and Tobago and the Workers' Bank, the second and third indigenous institutions on the local bankscape. NCB became the first bank to lend 75% of the value of the house or property you were looking to buy. The NCB eventually upped it to 90% when they partnered with an insurance company to insure 15% of the value of a mortgage for their clients. 15 and 75 equals 90%. And right there and then, the claim of up to 90% financing heard in every mortgage ad nowadays was born. In 1993, to ensure the survival of the legacy and vision for equal services and opportunity for all citizens, which these three indigenous banks fought to build, the first citizens bank was drawn. And like we say, the rest is both history and our future. As we celebrate 100 years of indigenous banking and all the benefits and unique perspectives and evolutions it continues to bring to our society, simply because it's 100% invested in our home, TNT. First Citizens, founded for the people, by the people.